Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about answering the question, ed to go for medical coding training? If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, first of all, this is not an endorsement for ed to go ed to go is an online program for training for medical billing and coding. That's number one. This is not an endorsement. Number two, I have answered this question several times. I have never been through ed to go. So I don't know what they are like, what their program looks like, but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to review and explain what they're talking about. Um, about ed to go through this one, uh, community college is offering it. Uh, a viewer had wrote in asking about this particular program. Eastern Iowa Community College is the one who offers this ed to go in their school. Now here's the, here's the other thing I will say this. So hopefully I can stop getting this question. Uh, I get this question quite often, even though in all of my videos, I have always said when people ask me what I think of this program or that program, I have always said, I have not been through all of these programs. But if they are training you for AHIMA, the American Health Information Management Association, or AAPC, the American Academy of Professional Coder credentials, one or the other, then you're good to go. Now, again, every program is going to be different. This one has an FAQ that I'm going to read with all of you. Uh, but I will say this, there are many alternatives. One is going directly to the association themselves. This is the only ones, the only two that I will say, uh, yes, if you get trained through them, okay, because they are the associations themselves preparing you for their certification exams. So those are the only ones that I can truly recommend. Now, as far as the cost goes, we've done a cost analysis about what the difference is uh, between getting certified with AHIMA and getting certified with AAPC. All you need is one certification. You do not need all these other specialty ones right now, especially when you're brand new. All you need is the CCA, the CCS, the CCSP, or even the CPC. One of these, just one. I wish that there was a cap on new medical coders and what they can get as far as credentials in their first two years, because I think that when you don't have experience and you're trying to rack up all these credentials because you think it makes you look more marketable, it doesn't. All it does is line the pockets of those associations that you're paying all of that money to maintain those credentials through. And that's just my thing. And I'm going to keep repeating myself. I'm going to keep saying it because I am so sick and tired of seeing so many people that are brand new being taken advantage of not getting the proper training and thinking that they need to invest all of this money so that they can get a job when all they need is one certification. But that's me on my little soapbox. So I'm going to get out, get down off of it because I can go into a whole thing about it. This particular program is 2,995. Now, this is because you are doing this basically on your own. Now, again, it's going to run about the same, give or take, $1,000. Uh, between AHIMA and AAPC, their programs online as well. So they're all averaging about the same type of cost. It's really going to depend on all the extra things. So with AHIMA, you're not getting anything extra except for the program itself, AAPC. Um, some people have said that they have access to trainers and instructors. Others, they didn't, even though they had access, they didn't have the best experience with that access. So again, it all depends. But if you're trying to learn this, expect that you're going to have to do a lot of your own like self training. Okay. Just expect it. Okay. That is just something that you ought to know. Uh, again, this program is $2,995. Let's see what they give you for $2,995. They do have a uh, FAQ frequently asked questions, and I'm going to read some of this. I will leave this link in the description. So that way, if you guys want to check it out, you totally can. But this should hopefully put to bed this question, what do I think of ed to go Again, I am completely objective on this. That I have no opinion when it comes to this program. But I, again, I will explain what they're trying to say here. So it says, what is medical billing and coding? Medical billers and coders are responsible for processing patient data through medical records and related insurance. In this position, you will code a patient's diagnosis and then request payment from the patient's insurance company. Technically, they don't get paid 
solely on diagnoses, right? Because it's the procedures that are driving the money. <laughs> uh, but that's a whole different story and they did not add it on here. So just so you know, it's diagnosis and procedures. All right, it's just saying. Uh, you will play an important role in ensuring that healthcare providers are quickly and accurately paid for the treatment that they give patients. Where do you work as a medical biller and coder? Uh, the common settings are hospitals, doctor's offices, and insurance agencies. And then they say some work for medical software, others work for educational institutions that work to train other medical billers and coders. Government agencies have also been known to employ medical billers and coders through the National Center for Healthcare Statistics and Medicaid offices. And then it says um, you may uh, also be you may also have the ability to work for a reputable company from your own home. See, this is where they start to sell the remote coding. So be careful, okay? This is where they start to sell this. Uh, it talks about what is a day in life of medical coder like? Um, uh, is medical billing and coding in high demand? Yes, there is a high demand for qualified medical billing and coding professionals in the healthcare industry today. Demand will increase uh, as a population in the United States ages, jobs for these professionals are on the rise and expected to grow faster than average through 2026, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, it says, how long do you have to go to school to become a medical coder? Our medical coding courses are self-paced and completed in 12 months or less. You will then have the option to prepare and sit for one of the following national certifications, AAPC's um, CPC Certified Professional Coder and AHIMA's uh, or AHIMA's um, Certified Coding Associate, the CCA. Uh, they also mention here the NHA's Certified Billing and Coding Specialist. I do not recommend the CBCS, the Certified Billing and Coding Specialist. The reason that I don't recommend this is because when you look at the job listings, they are asking for a HEMA, the, the HEMA, the CCA, the CCS, or the CCSP, or they're asking for AAPC, the CPC credentials. Those are what employers are looking for when they are looking for medical billers and coders, right? Medical billers specifically, you do not even have to be certified. Uh, but with uh, the NHA, this is, this is a billing um, test. Because for a long time, there were no books even required to take this exam. Now, why you have certified billing and coding specialist in there in the name when there's no, there was not even books at the time required uh, to take that certification exam. It was just like basically a memorization test where you memorize things. Now, they do require their people to... Um, uh, have books. So you do have to have books now to take the CBCS. I think that they're just trying to elevate uh, that credential a little bit so that way. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, guys, I still don't recommend it. So if this is the type of program that you're going through and they're offering you to, to, to a voucher because included in this program is a voucher to take one of these three, okay? Either the AHIMA, the, the AAPC, or the CBCS credential, one of them, right? And so I recommend that you either pick the CCA or you pick the, um, the CPC. Here's the thing. With the CCA, this is going to require you to not only know the CPT manual, which is covering the outpatient side, but it is also going to require you to know how to code for inpatient procedures, which is covered in the ICD-10 PCS manual. Now, if you don't know the difference, uh, to code through the ICD-10 PCS manual means that you will be creating those codes. Those codes are not stationary like the ones that are in the CPT manual where they're already built. The inpatient procedure codes, the ICD-10 PCS codes have to be built. Sometimes they're already built and sometimes they are not. And a lot of times they are not. So you're going to have to know anatomy, you're going to have to know your approaches, you're going to have to know like the reason why they're having the surgery, you're going to have to understand those terms. So it's a lot more uh, knowledge that you have to have in order to sit for the CCA exam. So when you think about, okay, well, I'm really only kind of comfortable with the outpatient setting coding. So like the CPT manual, I can, I can learn that. I, I've known, I know the Hicks Picks manual. 
So then you're looking at the CPC. AHIMA does offer a, um, a certification for outpatient coding only, which is the CCSP. That is a Certified Coding Specialist Physician Base. I have this certification. It is 100% outpatient coding. So they have their own. AAPC has their flagship credential of the CPC. So both of these are outpatient only certifications. So you could essentially sit for um, the CCSP if you wanted to. Uh, however, this program is going to pay for you to take the CCA, the CPC, or the CBCS. So again, it's really up to you, but if you only wanna test on the outpatient side in this program, if you're gonna go with the free voucher, then you would wanna pick the CPC. Now, um, in AAPC, they do require you to be a member of their association before you can pay to take your certification exam. This program says that that uh, membership fee is already covered in giving you the voucher for the CPC. So you don't have to worry about that, but that is just for the first year. Every year that you have the CPC, you do have to pay AAPC their $190 every single year. So that is something that you have to think about when you are getting these medical coding certifications. And if you're telling me, well, Blue, I can't afford it, I can't afford it. If in your mind you can't afford it and you're not thinking of ways to be able to afford these things, you're always going to be able to not afford it. So if that's an, an excuse uh, that you're saying is that I can't afford it, I can't afford it, guys. If you want to be in this field, this is what it takes. And this is not a cheap field to maintain, but it pays very well. So that is something that you have to consider if you are out there trying to figure out a way to get money to study or if you're trying to go through one of these programs like the WIOA. The Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act is available for people who are in low wage paying jobs, who are unemployed, who are displaced workers. You can find out more information online um, and I will leave the link for, for that website uh, in the description box below. So please check it out. If you ask me in the comments, your comment is gonna get deleted because I literally put it in the description box, okay? And I'm not trying to be like that. It's just that when I'm trying to tell people these things and I'm getting the same questions, I'm just wondering, are you guys listening? <laughs> are you hearing me out, you know? Uh, because I want you guys to know that it doesn't take, it doesn't have to take a ton of money to get started, okay? It doesn't. I was able to go through the WIOA program. It was a WI, WIA program when I went through it and they paid for me to go to school. Uh, I paid for a portion of my certification exam and that was it. So they paid for a portion and I paid for my portion and, and I got my CCA and that was how I started. So it, there is an opportunity for you guys to move up and advance and uh, excuse me, get uh, certified somewhere, but you have to think of ways to, to get what you want as far as getting into this field and studying. Uh, it says, how do I become a medical coder without experience? The path to a career in medical building and coding typically starts with certification. There are different medical billing and coding certifications offered through certifying bodies, so it is important to choose which one is right for you. This course will allow you to choose from three national certifications to sit for upon completion. Again, this didn't answer the question, how do I become a medical coder without experience? And it talks about that they have these three that you can choose from. You can uh, become a medical coder without experience. I was able to become a medical coder myself without experience. I went through the temp agency. There are also alternative jobs that you can go through, either medical billing or going through medical records, prior authorizations. Somebody did utilization review and that was how they were able to get in. And so there's all these other alternative positions that you can start in to go and, and get into medical coding. These are just suggestions. This is not everybody's path. I did not start off as a biller. I did not start off in any of the alternative positions. I started off as a medical coder because I went through a temp agency. Now, again, the path to everybody getting in is going to be different and it really all depends on how well you're doing your research and how well that you are just, um, not just dis not display um, how well you are are 
marketing your skills <laughs> to uh, be able to do this. So it really all depends on you. And if you're listening to naysayers, if you're listening to people who are um, complaining and going on about not being able to find a job because nobody wants to hire brand new medical coders, we were all brand new at one time. And we were all starting somewhere at one time. And if you concentrate on the things that you don't get or that it's not so easy for you to get in and then you're just going to give up right away, then again, I have said before, this is not the field for you. If you immediately give up and you listen to the naysayers and then you're part of that naysayer chorus, again, this is not for you. Please move on because my channel is for people who are interested in getting into medical coding, who want to change their career and are willing to uh, go above and beyond to try to get in. And if that means that they get a job right away as a medical coder, great, because it is possible. And because I know because I did it, again, I did it. So if I can do it, I know that there are other people that can do it, but it's not gonna be handed to you. And that's the problem. There's a lot of people that want stuff to be handed to them and they want to be um, just given everything and you can't, you're not going to. This is something that you have to work for, okay? so. Again, this program is saying that you're going to be on your own. And I'm just letting you guys know that that is the truth. Um, and it says, it goes on to ask, uh, how do I get a medical coding certification online? Uh, and it says to become a med certified medical coder, you need to take an online training course that teaches you CPT, ICD-10-CM, and Higgs-PIX level 2 code sets. Most employers are looking for applicants to have a medical coding certification. After successfully completing this course, you will have the knowledge and the skill set to become a medical coder and you can sit for one of the three national certifications uh, exams that are included with your, your tuition. They talk about uh, the CPC, the CCA, or the CBCS. And again, I, I would recommend either the CCA or the CPC. Um, What is the CPC? What is CPC? Can I get, how do I get my CPC? And it says, how do I get my CPC certification? After successfully completing this course, you will receive a prepaid voucher to register for the CPC exam and, and schedule your test date. Registration should be done within three weeks prior to the exam date. Um, after passing the CPC exam, you will have a CPCA designation without two years of prior experience. Completion of this, completion of the included CPC Practicode. So this program will allow you to have Practicode. And Practicode is an educational product offered with the American Academy of Professional Coders. It is just a, a, a collection of records, 660 uh, real life redacted records that you're gonna be going through different, um, different specialties to give you more practice and more experience. And they say that this amount of records is typically what a new medical coder would do in their first year, again, give or take. And so they will take one year off of your two year time commitment to have the apprentice status. That's what the CPCA stands for, uh, Certified Professional Coder Apprentice. So it's a two year time commitment. Completing Practicode will give you one year off so if you're working, you can be working concurrently and doing, C and doing Practicode and it will take one year to get the A removed off of your name, okay? Um, completion is, uh, completion of the CPC, uh, the included CPC Practicode will qualify as one year of experience towards the full CPC designation. Completing this program also qualifies uh, for one year of experience, thus completing both steps and passing the CPC exam will provide you with the full CPC designation and remove the apprenticeship status. Okay, so the, they're saying that if you go through their program and if you go and you complete Practicode, then you can get that apprentice status removed. That's okay. <laughs> All right, you know, uh, if that's the deal of the offer, okay, you know. Um, and then it goes on to talk about, let's see, how to become a certified professional coder. Medical billing and coding is hardly a career you jump into uh, and learn on the job. Uh, a medical biller and coder must understand the healthcare common procedural coding system, Hicks picks as well as CPT category two codes. <laughs> 
an ICD codes. You see, it's not a coder that's writing this. It's somebody who's selling that this that's just you know whatever uh, it's training. Um, what they mean is somebody who knows CPT, who knows Hix Pix level two codes, and who knows ICD ten CM. Again, they say ICD ten codes. Oh. Uh, says training courses will teach you what these codes are and how to use them and how to assign them uh, to common medical billing and coding procedures. Um, let's see. Can I register for courses if I'm an international student? Yes, Ed2Go is completely online. However, keep in mind that not all certifying bodies or industry-specific certifications are recognized internationally. Please review your country's regulations prior to enrolling in courses that prepare for certification. Again, if you're an international student and you're asking me this question, I'm sending this video straight to you. Um, does this course prepare you for certification? And again, it reiterates all the ones that it's, it's training you for. Uh, when can I start this course? It is open enrollment. So when you register, you can start the course whenever you're ready. Um, and this is how long does it take? Uh, after you register, you will receive 12 months to complete the course. The time is allotted for completion has been calculated based on the number of course hours. What if I don't have enough time to complete the course within the time frame provided? Um, it says if you are unable to complete the course, contact your student advisor to help you with a suitable completion date. Um, what kind of support will I receive? The course instructor will be available by email to answer any questions and provide feedback on your performance. Occasionally, your course may be supported by a team of industry experts. You will also receive support from a student advising team. And then, um, am I guaranteed a job? And it says Ed2Go courses will help you to gain the skills that you need to be able to obtain entry-level positions in most cases. However, you should always research the job market in your area before enrolling. And then um, I'm going to go over really quick because I'm almost out of time on my phone. <laughs> uh, let's see. The outline. So medical terminology is included with this. Medical billing and coding. Introduction to medical billing and coding. Introduction to health insurance. Managed health care. Uh, revenue cycle management. Legal aspects of health insurance and reimbursement. ICD-10-CM coding. CPT coding. Um, Hicks picks level 2 coding. ICD-10 PCS coding, that's if you're taking the CCA. Um, pharma <laughs> for coders. Uh, and then, um, then they have clinical documentation improvement. They have insurance claims. They have uh, commercial insurance, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Medicare, uh, Medicaid, CHIP, TRICARE, and workers' compensation, and then certification, getting ready for the certification exam. And then they have how to find a job in medical billing and coding. And then they talk about formulating your career goals, uh, what employers want, showcasing your skills, resume tips, cover letter tips, and interview. And then they have the final. So that is, it's quite a comprehensive program from what they have here outlined. It is, again, going to be on the individual to be able to study and prepare themselves for these exams. I talk all the time about my exam tips for medical coders, you know, whatever exam that you're trying to take. Um, either the one with AHIMA or with AAPC. So really take the time, guys, to please look through my videos. I try to put the titles as closely as I can um, to the subject that it's covering. I know there's a lot of videos, but it's worth it to look through and to be able to do your research, okay? So uh, you can look at the homepage of Medical Coding with Blue. You can type in the little search box. You can type in exam prep tips. You can type in um, study tips. You can type in anything um, that you can think of. And trust me, I've already done a video on it. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I'm going to wrap this one up. I hope this was helpful. Um, I know I'm very blunt and very straightforward, but that is my nature. Um, that is what I do. And I'm a medical coder. I love this field. And I want people to know what this is before they get into it. Okay, so I'm just putting it out there. If you haven't had a chance to, I hope that you will like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, share this video, and I will see you all next time. Bye.